I get this question all the time. How much does a digital marketer make? How much do they earn? Well, I'm going to answer that for you today. Hey, what's up, guys? Rich here from richandniche.com. Really simple, straightforward video for you today answering the question, how much do digital marketing consultants make? How much do freelance marketers make? How do they get paid? I get this question all the time. You know, how do I charge? How do I bill? And I've kind of gone into that in other videos, but this specific video, I just want to talk about earning potential because I think this is one of the most fascinating parts about being a digital marketer in any sense, whether you build your own brand and you're a digital marketer or you build brands for other people. I I certainly think both pathways work. I'm using both pathways. Um, you know, the answer is there is absolutely no ceiling um, for your income as a digital marketer because you have one of the rare skill sets that can actually build what's called an asset. An asset can create money for you, essentially. Uh, sometimes they're passive, sometimes they're not. But the fact is, assets are what help people become wealthy. And I think that digital marketers have a unique ability to create assets, digital assets. And I think the digital marketing skill set is one of the most leverageable skill sets. The way you can use your energy, your skills, your strategy, these different elements of digital marketing, apply them to a business and, and get immense results in very little time. I just think the skill set is so, so potent. And although you might start out with an agency or as a job in the marketing department and you're doing digital marketing, you know, maybe you're making 40K a year. Um, but that's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you go out on your own, when you build your own business, when you become quote unquote, an entrepreneur, technically, um, that's where I'm talking about. There's no ceiling. I mean, if you have a job and you're restricted to be paid nine to five, I mean, you're always going to have a salary cap. You're always going to be competing in the job market. But I think the digital marketer naturally will have some of the useful skills such as video content creation, copywriting, writing in general, speaking and communicating. Like a lot of the skills I uh, demonstrate, these will help you be powerful on your own independently, right? Like if someone specializes in accounting, that doesn't necessarily um, translate to the modern culture of content creation, social media, but the digital marketing skills, it really does translate into that area. So I see more power to the independent freelance marketer coming forward. And I want to talk about how much they can make, right? And certainly when you start, you, you, you aren't making infinity. You aren't making a million. No, no, that's not what I said. I don't think there's a ceiling and that could take five, 10, 20 years, a career. Um, and I believe that to be true. But let's talk about the very beginning. You know, what do you make when you very, you know, starting out? Well, it really depends on what skills you're going to be deploying um, for your clients. And the more creative and strategic your skills are, the more you can charge. The more commodity based, the more outsourceable you are, the more process and SOP based you are, you know, you might be replaceable. So your rate may go down. I think ideally, if someone else is generating the business and the work, it's very hard for you to go more than $30, $40 an hour. I mean, so much of the business is the selling, is the project work generation. Therefore, that deserves a huge chunk of the earnings pie. Um, so that's the difficulty about working in an agency. And I hear a lot of stories about people working in an agency, not enjoying it, being paid very little to do too much. Um, and I think that's because the agency business is very hard and I think there's a small margin. I think it's hard to please clients at the agency level. It takes a lot of manpower. It takes a lot of committed resources. And again, coming back to why that independent freelance model really works strong in the digital marketing space. If you're a freelance marketer, I think, and you do the selling, you went and closed the deal, not someone brought you the work. I think you can charge 65, 75 US dollars as a base price for things like light copywriting, page development, writing and setting up email automation. Um, if you're getting into Facebook ads, I would try to push that rate up. And the only way I would ever consider working on an hourly rate 
is if I was getting a guaranteed amount of hours per month. I think that's something you want to strive for if you're still in the hourly model. That gives you comfort, uh, sustainability, confidence in the future, um, feeling p- at peace. You're not worried as much about where your next job is coming from. I think it's okay to work hourly in the beginning uh, because a lot of the clients you work with won't have a budget to pay you full time. So maybe you get three to five small clients. And I think that's how I did it. I think that's how most people should start out because those projects will be really lightweight and low pressure. If you take on a $5,000 client to start, you might be surprised how intensive that feels and you might not be ready for that. Now, you know, we don't really want to sell our time. It's not ideal, but I think because the hourly rate is quite high, I mean, you know, selling your time at 75 to a hundred dollars an hour and even higher versus selling your time at 20 or 15. Yeah. It's, it's a big difference, especially in the Western culture. So I wouldn't scoff at hourly work if you can get it up into that hundred dollar plus range. Um, I think if you're doing strategic consulting, you know, $200 to $300 per hour is very reasonable. Um, you got to be good. You have to have some experience. You have to be confident. You have to present well, full package. Uh, but that's just hourly, you know. I think some other pricing models that I'm going to discuss now are like monthly, project-based, incentive-based. So let's say you make $100 an hour and you work like 20 hours a week. You know, you're going to make 2 k a week. You make 8 k a month. That's before taxes, Um, I don't think that's quite enough. I think you need to work towards more. I think before taxes, getting close to the 12 or 14K is going to make you much more satisfied and make sure your lifestyle design uh, is sustainable, right? Because we're always afraid to make lifestyle design choices because we're unsure if we can maintain something, right? So moving into maybe a monthly package can be quite nice. Um, you know, getting people on packages that require content, Facebook ads, something that's a routine management, project management, ongoing maintenance of a program, you know, getting like two to $3,000 a month. Um, you know, that can be quite nice for sort of part-time work. I think we're going to see a lot more part-time and quarter-time work. I don't think full-time work is going to be very common anymore. I think there's so many varied roles. It's very hard to give people full-time work. It's a lot easier to give them quarter and half-time work now. And with gig economy and a flatter, uh, sort of organizational structure that may align a lot better with that. So I can see that happening. Um, Right. And again, monthly is okay, but let's say you get paid 3K a month. Like, can you really take five of those? You're going to have to start hiring. So you're hitting this point. So it's like, well, how can I get my income with no ceiling then, Rich? Like, how is that possible? Yeah. And that's true. Like, when you're, when you're in monthly, it's just a different time frame. You still haven't really broken out um, of your ability to sort of scale and divorce yourself of selling time. The next, the first way to get out of time selling, I suppose, would be project-based work. You agree on the value of the output of some work, maybe copywriting, maybe a website, funnel, Facebook ad campaign with videos, and you set a price and you say, I'm only gonna do it for this price. And that price should include taxes. That price should include profit margin. That price should include subcontractors. That price should include contingency. It really has nothing to do with your time anymore. You promise to deliver X by Y for a certain price. And that's when you need a contract. When you're doing hourly and monthly, you don't really need a contract because if one person stops paying, you just do the stop doing the work. Like I didn't really set contracts in the beginning because it's like you got to pay me up front and... If you stop, I'll just stop working. No problem. Like when you're grinding out the early stages, like making contracts is not what you want to be thinking about. Like putting people on contracts is a waste of time. Like either they like you or they don't like you, right? Don't bother with people that need a contract because, you know, they're not the really ideal person who's going to see value early on. You need an early adopter, an early client. Maybe they need a special extra benefit of working with you, um, whether it's time, whether it's access. Nonetheless, Back to project-based work. Um, This is where you want to get to, certainly. And this allows you to eventually outsource. This allows you to eventually really maximize your time. 
Now you could start doing multiple five and multiple $10,000 projects a month, technically, um, because it wouldn't be based on your time. No one expects you to be anywhere. They expect that you give them something, whether that's brand identity and logos, written text, pictures, I don't know, right? There could be any of the mediums. Um, you can build a team, you can build a process, you can build a machine that serves that. And I think you're always working towards that as an entrepreneur. You certainly never want to work with your time forever. So project-based, great. You know, now you're not worried about time, but what about that income ceiling? Have we truly breached the ability to make seven figures just from digital marketing? Not quite yet. The next thing we need to do is become rewarded for our efforts on a commission basis. And I think you can always tack on the sort of additional commission. So everything I said before, plus I get 4% of gross revenue. Everything I said before, plus I get $50 for every product sold. I think working with your clients to say, listen, I want to do work for you and I want to help you and I want to be great. But the fact is, if I'm not really tied to the sale, like I'm not really incentivized to seek every single avenue for you to succeed. I'll just meet my deliverables and we'll probably part ways. But the fact is at the end of the day, you want sales, right? So moving into a form of incentive, not pure incentive, never just take incentive, always get paid for your work. Um, but then adding on a commission, a bonus. Hey, listen, if I do a great job, I get a bonus. If it doesn't work, hey, we both, we don't take anything. Like you didn't make a law and I won't take a bonus. But if this works, why shouldn't I be rewarded for that? And so now you're starting to get into the world of my work could be done and there could be more and more sales that keep on coming that have nothing to do with today. And that's where you want to get to is growing your ownership of projects building your equity within projects, and eventually owning your own projects that are taking on the digital marketing framework. Whether you have a digital product, information, entertainment, software, app, or you have a hard good and you're trying to get into the drop shipping or Amazon FBA, or even you know first party shipping with very custom um, styling, labeling, and aesthetics. I mean, you can go digital, you can go hard good, but the fact is you're gonna be running ads, you're going to be creating organic content, you're going to be pretty good at branding and aesthetics, you're going to have a decent copywriting, you're always going to be selling more than average. That's where you want to get to. That's where, you know, $1,000 a day and up really becomes viable. You sell a couple products, maybe you close one client. Um, you know, and I think that the digital marketer is just slowly going down this path as they learn more and more they eventually create what I call a school of thought. You know, there is no perfect marketing. Don't forget that. You may believe something different than me, and that's great. Go prove it. Go find out if it works. Make a case study, and that's your school of thought. Maybe you're like, it's not Facebook ads, Rich. It's not Instagram ads. It's TikTok. Great. Go for it. You know, maybe I'm thinking the same thing. It's LinkedIn. It's Twitter. Hey, it's up to you. Maybe you do them all. Like maybe your school of thought is it's one, maybe it's all. Those are two different paths, right? But either way, as you learn, you need to get paid more and more and more. You need to get your time back slowly and surely. It takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. You replace one client at a time, right? You got to hustle that first year. First 365 days, don't take any time off. Work all day. Only take breaks for your family and for absolute critical things. Um, this is something you want to build as fast as possible. You know, when they say like, Hey, if you invested all the way back then and you, and, and you left it compounding for 25 years, it would be this. And people are like, Oh yeah, I can't. And it's really hard to like invest a bunch of money all at once to get that going. But in this case, it's, you can invest a bunch of time, which you probably have. And you can build a lot of this stuff really quickly. You can find these early clients quickly. You can reinvest the money into your own work, into your own products, into your own courses, into your own apps and software. I know people are like, I'm never going to create software. And I, I thought that too. But when you go through digital marketing path, what you recognize is that software is one of the most beautiful, scalable, reoccurring charge models. 
And it's often that once people get locked into a software, they can't get out. People love that as a business model. And so often as a marketer, you're creating complex processes. You're doing complex reporting. You're coming up with duct tape solutions to make this, this, and this work. Well, guess what? That's what software comes from. It comes from solving those niche problems, right? Look at software now. They're all very specific. They just fill one little gap. As a digital marketer, someone who's fascinated with the customer journey, with research and development, um, you're going to be able to learn what people want. That's what I've noticed from my own path. And this is really where the ceiling is removed. Not only do you get to move into the frequency of ownership, you get to have equity, you get to have cash flow. You know, you're going to be able to create assets. Whether you buy dividends or real estate or you invest in software and building your company, you're just going to be in a position to win, to be successful. Um, and it all comes from that long grind through the client services, let you, you know, you always start with other people's money, OPM, right? You, you, you don't have any money to start. So you go hustle, you cut your teeth. Like I learned Facebook ads while doing it for other clients who maybe didn't hire me for Facebook ads. Maybe they hired me to do the website, which is easy, but then they're like, oh, well, why don't you do our Facebook ads? Okay, sure. Like that's years ago, right? And it's like, now you're getting this education through someone who's willing to learn with you because they're typically small budget. You got to start in the small budget, right? You don't start in corporate. You don't start in Fortune 500. So, you know, I think I've explained now why there's no ceiling here. And it's because this is a path to ownership and a path to assets. Um, and I think that's what we all eventually need to work towards. That's where I think that real passive uh, generational wealth can be built. So that's going to be it for today's video. I hope this video was helpful. If you want to know more about pricing or um, income or how much you get paid, um, just leave a question below. I'll answer it. I answer most of my comments. And uh, if you've been enjoying the channel, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And that's all for today, guys. See you next time.